Live Live on RT Radio 1 with Lloyd's Pharmacy. We work hard to keep our prescription prices down. Lloyd's Pharmacy. Now that's better. 1850-715-815. Hello, good afternoon, and you're very welcome to the King's Lee for Funny Friday in Cork. Yeah! It's, as you know, it's every presenter's dream to introduce the finest comedians, the finest impressionists, the finest musicians that Ireland has. Unfortunately, they're all in Dublin. <laughs> but we do have... We do have Mr. Sil Fox. Sil, how are you? I'm, I'm delighted to be, as I say, back in, uh, in Cork. And uh, I came down by train yesterday. And uh, I'm sitting there, and the priest got in beside me. He was sitting there, and then this fellow got in with a few jars on him. Oh, he sat beside the priest. The priest wasn't very happy. And this drunk, he says to the priest, he says, What causes arthritis, Father? <laughs> and the priest said, I'll tell you this, Father. He said, I'll tell you what it means. He says, arthritis. He says, it means that uh, you get it from immoral living. Smoking, drinking, and carousing with strange men. He said, How long have you had it? He said, I just read the paper, the Pope has it. My <laughs> friend Charlie was on the train, he had his mother now with him, and of course she had her dog, Pankinese. And there it was on the seat, and the train was packed. And this American comes along, he said, My aunt. Could you kindly move your dog, please? There's no room on the train. She, she, I'm not moving that dog. So the yank goes on, the train comes back, no seats. He said, ma'am, there's no room on the train. Could you kindly move your dog? She, she, I'm not moving that dog. So the yank opens the window and he throws the dog out the window. <laughs> Charlie, of course, is taking up his foot and I said, hold on. He says, you yanks are all the same. You drive on the wrong side of the road. You had the wrong fork and the wrong hand, he says, and now he said you'd have to throw the wrong bitch out of the way. <laughs> uh, I was feeling a bit down yesterday because a great friend of mine, uh, he bought a box of after uh, eights. He died at half seven. <laughs> <laughs> but my, my friend Joe, he got a job over in London on the building site. And uh, the guy said, if you want to sack one or two weeks, too many books. So he's up the middle, so he shouts up, Mink, you're sick! Mink says, what? You're sick! What? You're sick! I can't hear you. I said, hell, he's going to sack someone else. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought to take to the office, he said, what's wrong with you? He's I'm dizzy. He said, have you vertigo? He said, no, I only live around the corner. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he said, what would you want to paint? A 30 foot brush, a 30 foot chimney, he said a 30 foot brush, which wasn't so bad. This the last year, look this one. Joe was over in England and he sees this in a chemist. Pills make you feel younger. He said, I get it something else, send it back to my mother. So he sent it back to the mother and a bill. A couple of months after he goes home and who meets him at the railway station? Nobody, except this beautiful woman comes along the platform and just as she passes him by she says to him, Hello, son. He said, who are you? She says, I'm your mother. The tablets make you feel younger. Look at me. He couldn't believe it. She said, he's not fantastic to see him. What about the baby? She said, that's your father. He said, <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely incredible. My speech was, was unbelievable. Melania's was fantastic. She, she, you know what? She has a degree in plagiarism. She really does. Thank she you. does. She does. She's fantastic. Didn't you watch it? Yeah, I did. Much better than uh, 2008's Obama, Michelle Obama. Much better. Al Pacino's here. How are you, Al? I'm feeling good. I gotta tell you, there's something about Cork. These people are great, full of energy, like me. I'm feeling good. Jennifer Lopez. J-Lo? I was with J-Lo. 
at her, at her 47 birthday. 47 going on 21, that lady is. She is beautiful, I'll tell you that much. And, and Ronaldo walked into the gym. He thought he could size me up. I told him I will have I will have him for that Forbes number one list next year. If I'm making all of that though over in America, the training is very good, so I will win next month. Don't you worry about that. <laughs>
the leader of the people in the land of Britain said he would go up to the wilderness because of Brexitus and he left the house of number 10 and kicked the cat on the way out. <laughs> so he had to find another leader and lo and behold, there was only one person left who would lead the people and it was St. Teresa of the May. <laughs> and she was delighted and the first thing she did was grab Boris by the dispatch box and told him he'd be doing a bit of travelling so oil up your bike and she sent them off to talk to the very people he didn't want to have anything to do with in the first place and he was raging the big Egypt. Now, what ended the leader was shot and worried about what was written in the book of Brexit because his land was very close to the land of Britain and he ran straight away to see the angel Merkel who knew everything and he kissed her on both cheeks then got up off his knees and asked the angel Merkel to make sure he could still be friends with the people of Britain because his people loved going over to visit them and he hated if they'd have to start sneaking back the big Mars bars and those big Toblerones again in their bags and they sweating in case they get caught and they get on the boat home. And what about the north of the land and the border of the north said Enda and he only thinking about getting the fireworks back from the Halloween party. Now, and the people cried out, we don't want a hard border. And Jerry the Northerner and Mary the Lou suggested that we do away with it all together and become one big happy family in the promised land. But they were told to fuck off. <laughs> so the angel Merkel just told Enda to visit St. Teresa of the May himself and sort out his own problems. So Enda went over to the house of number 10 and he knocked on the door. And Teresa opened it and said, what do you want? And then they said, I'm here about the border. And Teresa thought he was the gardener and said, well, I'm a small herbaceous one. <laughs> <laughs> But then they eventually had a chat with St. Teresa of the May and she told him everything would be grand and stop worrying and she wrapped up a few cucumber sandwiches for him for the trip home. So he left the house in number 10, no wiser than when he went in. Now, did Michael the tax collector make a big announcement about the economy of the land and he said it grew by 26% last year and all the experts threw their pencils in the air and said how in the name of all that's holy did you come up with that and they laughing at him so michael said you better ask them and he pointed to a group of little men in green with red beards shiny buckles on their shoes and they smoking little pipes and all but before the experts could ask them anything the little men took off over the rainbow to the land of make-believe and then michael just slid under the table hoping he wouldn't be seen but he was stung for an extra 280 million to give to the crowd he borrowed from in the first place. <laughs> but Michael, the tax collector, just smiled and said, Sodom and Begari. <laughs> earlier on you were 23 years happily married. <laughs> but, so I'll get, you, you, you want to read out the poem? Oh, I'd be delighted. Okay. 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 Now, many verses? They're short. They're four. Yeah, but it's one for every year. <laughs> <laughs> Will I start so, Joe? Yeah. Yeah. The name of the dress, or the name of the poem is The White Crochet Dress. This is 45 years ago and they were in fashion at that time. So, the ballroom of romance, the blast from the past. You beauty with the night, can I please have this dance? Your stars shone so bright, I saw no one else. I was dazzled by the girl in the white crochet dress. <laughs> the Honda, the Mini, the Eagle Quinn, and the Ranch, the two Dannys, the Boston Burglar, we sang and we danced. The Hennikins, the Highland, Mary and the rest, I surrendered to the girl in the white crochet dress. Oh. We hitchhiked to London via Victoria Road. I slept with your brother. You had a more pleasant abode. The zoo, Addy Paddy, we were young. Oh, well, sorry, with your husband that slept with you. I got confused. <laughs> I thought it was you saying you were making a revelation. No, no, we remind listeners, we're in the Kingsley Hotel in Cork, and 
this lady is reading a poem that was written by her husband, so don't get confused. <laughs> you just start that verse again, because tell me what they're falling to faint. It was 45 years ago. Oh, no, you didn't sleep with your boyfriend's name. <laughs> We hitchhiked to London via Victoria Road. I slept with your brother. You Explain that, we just people know. You had a more pleasant abode. Yeah. To do any penny, we were young, we were blessed. Then I married a girl in the white crochet dress. Ah. We stood on some great heights, saw rock bottom too. Through sunshine and storms, we stood there like blue. <coughs> and now in our twilight, I bear no regrets, and I still love my girl in the right crochet. Wow. <laughs> Yourself and your, your, your poet husband are going to Rod Stewart. Oh. At the three arena, and that's uh, in November. Okay, sir. Oh. Please, uh, please welcome. He always graces us every bank holiday weekend, normally on his way back to Galway. Uh, Oops, on the hair, Michael. Here we go. Let's bring you a very busy time. I know you're at the Galway race this week. We're at the Euros at Duranda. I'm told the plane journey is it to France or from France was very, very difficult. Both. Both. What happened? Oh, they were terribly <laughs> sorry. Yes, Joe, I, I, I'm going to tell you the story about it. we just taken off from Dublin Airport, Paris, down there. I, I had just started reciting the Irish version of UEFA's football in Novena, a mother of perpetual soccer preference. But <laughs> the captain came on the air to come and announce, Welcome to flight EI-293 Dublin to Paris. We are cruising at an altitude of 20,000 feet. Weather is fair. We should reach Charles de Gaulle Airport in approximately one and a half hours. So sit back and relax. And next thing, Joe, the captain let a roar out of him. Oh, my God! And with that, the plane took a nosedive and a somersault. And at one stage, it was that bad, I was looking into the back of my own neck. <laughs> and the plane settled down, and there was silence. And then, a few moments later, the captain came on the intercom. He says, ladies and gentlemen, I am sorry if I scared you. But while I was talking to you earlier, the flight attendant accidentally spilled a pot of coffee on my lap. You should see the front of my trousers. I was livid, you. I let a roar out of me. Well, you should see the back of mine. <laughs> <laughs> that experience on the way back. Oh, the flight on the way back, you, was worse. <laughs> the weather was cat and It rained for 40 days and 40 nights, and then it turned to continuous rain. <laughs> and of course, I was nervous, and I asked, the chief air hostess, could I sit in the back of the plane? She was very black, so she said to me, why do you want to sit in the back of the plane? Well, I said, you'll never have to a plane back into a mountain, did you? <laughs> and between air turbulence and John Delaney singing, I refused breakfast because I was afraid you that I might be looking at him twice, if you know. <laughs> you know one thing I discovered about John Delaney? He's not a bad singer, Joe, if you like bad singers. And of course, Sevilla. She was like a cut cat. She was over in Paris with me, and nothing would do what you wanted. She went shopping for a new frock. And I warned her not to go near these factory outlets on the outskirts of Paris. Of course, she arrived back to the hotel with a new frock, and she took it out to the bag to show it to me. I, I spotted a small flaw in it. Of course, not everyone would see it except somebody as fashion conscious as myself. <laughs> Wasn't one sleeve longer than the other. <laughs> but I think the rest of the, the plane journey was was uneventful, hopefully. Was it straightforward? It, 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 well, it was really. I suppose it was. It, I mean, I, I had a couple of baby powers and the crack was 19. <laughs> Innocently enough, and John Delaney said to me, what do you think um, of Saturday night with Miriam? I said, any night with Miriam. <laughs> <laughs> Sabina gave me a look that would turn back a few of them. I just closed my eyes, Joe, before I knew it. I was dreaming that 
Miriam and I were on a tandem competing in the Tour de France. <laughs> and we were leading the tour, so it was because Lily was wearing her uh, yellow blouse. You know the one she wears in the TV advert? Yeah, and, and, and yes. And we were flying, or we were giving a tomahawk wasque. <laughs> and we were cycling down the side of a mountain. When what happened to you but the brave spade? <laughs> and I went head over heels over the handlebars into a lake. And on one side of the lake, Joe lived the Smith family. And on the other side of the lake, lived the Ball family. And luckily, Joe, in the nick of time, I was put out by the space. <laughs> and I woke up. I was in a state of... Now, when you arrive back in the hour, I arrive to tell us another surprise. Wait. First of all, Joe, when I got off the plane, my tongue was hanging out a yard in front of me for a happy meal at McDonald's. I was fed up eating snails and frog legs and everything. <laughs> we come to live back to uh, Dublin Airport, and Mother of God, who was sitting on two seat cases outside the front door of the Arizona, Mr. Umpalumpa and Mrs. Umpalumpa, I said in my own mind, I would do something. Who was the Uteronis? Mrs. Umpalumpa and Mr. Umpalumpa. Oh, for God's sake, John. <laughs> Donald Duck Trump at the White House. Melania. She gave me a big smatter of a kiss on the lips. She said he was not too pleased. And I'm not calling a joke. You'd want to see the head of himself. It's like a field of oats that was lodged after a night's rain. <laughs> version of the fellow in the chill insurance ad that's at the bar. The state of it. When we held bilateral talks and we went out to the garden, Joe, for a couple of drinks and winkies. And he must have drank a creamery can full of Budweiser. And of course, Sabina couldn't leave it alone. What do you think she said to him? Do you know, Donald, what the difference is between men and pigs? And Donald replied that he didn't. Well, she says, when pigs drink, they don't make men of themselves. I was absolutely <laughs> mortified. And but it is, it is being reported now that there was an incident with Donald in the Auris, and he ended up in the Matter Hospital. Oh, well, I tell you what happened, Joe. Donald was lying back at the lounge of the garden with a fight of wasps. Scooped and stubborn, the wasp was identified as a Ted Cruz missile weapon. <laughs> is, it, is, it, is it sensitive to ask where he was stung? He was stung in the arms. Where did you <laughs> No, but I mean, where in the arms? The Empire State Building. What does that mean, the Empire State Building? Oh, for God's sake, Joe. Do I have to spell it out to you? He was stung in his private heart. <laughs> and he was rushed to A.B. at the Mountain Hospital. Melania and I, as head of state, commander in chief of the defense forces, accompanied Donald and his hair to the heart. And the man was rolling in pain, and Melania was so loyal to him. Her world was her bond, and her man was her blood. <laughs> and I threw out Donald's ordeal, she was holding his hand. And she was pleading with God to take away the pain, but to leave the swelling. <laughs> Lifeline 
on RT Radio 1 of Lloyd's Pharmacy, your choice of pharmacy and your Lloyd's Pharmacy, now that's better. Talk to Joe on 1850 Welcome back, it is Bank Holiday Weekend to the King's League in the centre of Cork. And we have lots of special guests here. Mary O'Rourke is here. Mary, how are you? <laughs> I saw you. I saw you on with Miriam last Saturday, and mm. I just said to myself, 